One day, a person came to Luqman. This person said to him, Hey Luqman, remember you and I and our friends, we used to spend so much time together. We'd burn the midnight oil, if you like. We'd spend hours at night speaking and so forth. Aren't you the same person that used to do that? Luqman said, yes, I was. He said, well, how were you endowed with all of this knowledge? How is it that you have so much wisdom and foresight and understanding of the world around you? Because, you know, you've seen people who go about life in a haphazard way. They do things out of a spur of the moment. Everything they do seems like it was a product of a very short amount of thinking and they just do things because they react so quickly. And then again, you have people whose actions are calculated, whose words are premeditated. Everything they do, they spend a long time in planning and plotting and figuring out all the different aspects of it. This person was basically telling Luqman that you used to be one of us. And now you seem to be the kind of person who has great advice to offer other people. And you also live by that advice yourself. What changed? What happened? So Luqman said, Qadarullah. Listen carefully. He said, first of all, it was God's will that I have what I have. Meaning that it wasn't my own actions. It's not because I'm a special person. It's not because I'm good. Because you, you know, you'll, you'll come across people who are so proud of their achievements, their academic accolades, their pieces of paper that they hang on the wall. But these are really precious items to them. And if you ask them, like, what's your CV? Who are you? They'll list a long list of items of what they feel are their uh, achievements and whatnot. Luqman's wisdom compels him to begin introducing himself by saying, God is the one who gave me all of this. It's not me, it's God. But if you were to ask me about certain things which I might have done by the blessing of God, by the backing of Allah, that allowed me to have the capacity for this kind of wisdom, then I will tell you a number of things. Number one, Ada'ul Amana. That when someone entrusted me with something, I would always fulfill that trust. I would always honor my word. I would never break my promise to anyone. Ada'ul Amana is a key ingredient, brothers and sisters, in having any kind of relationship with God and having any kind of faith in your heart. There is a, a narration which actually goes above and beyond this in which the Imam states that if you want to judge someone, do not judge them by the amount of prayers they perform. Prayer in itself is obligatory. It's a sign of belief. It's incredibly important. It's a pillar of our faith. Don't get me wrong, but do not judge someone. Do not evaluate someone by the number of units of prayer they perform or by how long it lasts them to perform one prayer. Do not judge them by that. Do not judge them by the amount of time they spend at night praying to God and supplicating and so forth. How can you truly evaluate someone? The Imam says, Sidq al-Hadith wa ada al-Amana. Whether they're truthful when they speak and whether they honor their words. This is a sign of belief because you can be someone who prays just to receive other people's praise. You can be someone who fasts just because you happen to occupy a prominent position within the community. And of course, if you do that, then you must tick all those boxes and fasting is one of them. But when it comes to speaking the truth, even if, it's, if it runs contrary to your own interest, when it comes to fulfilling your promise to others and honoring your word and keeping your commitments, that is a true sign of a believer. You have people who pretend to be religious, but as soon as they gain a position of authority, as soon as they gain some notoriety, that's when they begin to take advantage of that position. And you can begin to discover the fact that they really never had any faith in their hearts. It was all for a show. So Luqman says, Ada'ul Amana, honoring my commitment is what gave me wisdom. Number two, Wasidqul Hadith, being truthful at all times. And number three, Wasamtu Amma La Yu'anini and to choose to be quiet when irrelevant matters came, came up. Meaning that if this matter is not relevant and directly pertinent to yourself and to your prosperity and to your safety and to your happiness, do not engage. Always be disengaged with conversations or stories or gossip or issues or problems that happen in the community if it's not directly uh, pertinent to yourself, if you are not directly involved. Don't get involved in matters that fall outside 
of your field of interest. Some people get into a fight with someone, who cares? Another person has an issue with someone and they're going around the community backbiting and slandering them. Don't get involved. Or if you're asked a question and you don't know the answer to that question. And this is a problem, um, especially affecting uh, matters of religion. People always have questions about religion and people always seem to have an opinion about matters of religion. You don't know the answer. You don't have solid proof. Disengage. Do not get involved. Do not answer that question. So this kind of gives you a broad idea of the character traits that allowed Luqman to be who he was. But